Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have a cute little unboxing to share with you today. I originally saw um, something similar to this <clears throat> at um, Just Scribble, a YouTube channel. Um, I've enjoyed watching her reviews and I'm pretty sure she was the first one. Um, I think her name is Siobhan or something like that. It's a really cool looking name. Uh, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but anyway, I like her channel, enjoy her reviews, and I loved seeing this little um, ink stamp swatching idea. Um, it's an ink stamp for swatching. So I looked around for it. I finally found it on an Etsy vendor thingy. This is coming from Singapore. Um, Win. I don't know if that's just part of the name, but... It took a little while to get here, but they did say that in the description that it would uh, be somewhere mid to late August. So I was expecting that, but it's kind of cute. There's a little bit of washi tape there and it's a colorful envelope. So I like that. This green is like a green I really like. Um, anyway, I'll probably cut that out and put that in my scrapbook journal somewhere. And then this is really cool, the uh, Singapore stamp here. I have mentioned before and maybe you're the same way you enjoy seeing things from other countries the way they do their stamps or how their writing looks that's always been a fascinating thing for me my mom and my aunt both liked to travel and I think they kind of instilled in me that appreciation for things like that from other cultures different than my own and it just says, thank you. We hope you enjoy your purchase. Ooh, and here's 10% off your next order. So very nice. Stamped and sealed company. And then it was uh, on Etsy, stamped and sealed co.etsy.com. So this is it. Isn't that cute? So what I, I thought would be to take um, the archival black ink and stamp it in a designated Traveler's Notebook insert and then sample my inks in it. Um, definitely not a necessary thing, but for me a fun thing. And it's funny because I thought, why do people really need to do that? And then I have these two fountain pen inks that both have the same brown in them. I actually filled them with this scotch brown ink from Monte Verde USA and I was writing with them and I'm like one sepia by diamine and the other is the Monte Verde scotch brown and it ended up they were both the same because I didn't keep track of it so I just kind of like to have different inks and different pens so far anyway I'm shaking this up this is the Rouge Hematite by uh, Jacques Herbin that's how I say it in my pseudo French accent Urban, Urban, I've heard people pronounce it, but there's my mangled French version. Anyway, this to me looks very similar to this one. Obviously, this is the Eidelstein one. Can't quite read the other, so these may actually be ones that I'm supposed to know and I'm not familiar with yet. But anyway, I thought that was cute. So, and they're not too big. I wasn't sure exactly how big to expect these stamps to be, but um, I think it would be a good size. This looks like the White House there, but it could be any number of capital type buildings, at least in the United States. So let's open this up and give it a whirl. Um, if you're not familiar with some of the things with stamping, if you get these cling stamps, it's much easier to apply them if you have an acrylic block. I bought these a while back at uh, Joanne Fabric and Crafts. And then I have a black um, distress ink, but this is the archival one, so this will mean that it's permanent and waterproof. So when I put a wet ink on top of it, it won't run. And 
I haven't decided yet, but I have this passport size traveler's notebook. This was an Amazon purchase, which I thought was a good deal. It's about $15 and it included like this folder and this and another insert. And then I, I think it might have included this calendar one or I might have bought that separate to put in here. I liked how I saw this on Seaweed Kisses. She she does some fun videos and I like Michelle's way of doing her traveler's notebooks and I think I was kind of inspired by that but having this um, calendar in my purse ended up being felt redundant to me because I have another planner so I quit using it so anyway I have this no current inserts right now available that fit well I do have the clear fontaine but I don't think I want to make that big of a notebook my swatch book but I'll decide on that later for now let's try it on this paper this feels smooth smooth to the touch I don't know if it's going to be a little bit too absorbent of a paper for fountain pen inks but let's just give it a whirl and um, just for demonstration purposes I will kind of tweak my system here later and decide what kind of notebook. I'm really enjoying Sojourner's B6 Slim Tomoe River Paper Insert. I love how the ink works on that and also my uh, Nanami Cafe Notes. But we'll just use this paper that I'm not sure about just to show you how this might work. So what I think I'll do is just decide which ink bottle stamp I want to use. That looks super cool. Ooh, I love it. Very, very fun. And I didn't grab a wipe, but typically I use a baby wipe or a hand wipe and just swipe those off every time I'm done using them. Close this up. So this would be good for watercolor too. Once the ink is dry, then it shouldn't run. I think I just want to try the Rouge Hematite and I thought I would just use this little paintbrush I have. I think I got this at Ikea, it was in a little set. I just kind of shook this up. It's got a, a shimmering quality to it that I want to include. Possible. Like this is just fun. And, you know, of course, you don't need a little ink stamp, but when I saw that, that's the kind of thing that just seems fun to me. Makes it, I don't know, just a tad bit more creative or interesting to look at, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's just fun. There's a sheen in there that is kind of golden and glittery. When I first saw this ink, um, I think it was on Goulet pens and there is a like greenish quality that can show up too but I haven't had that show up as much as just the shimmer and it's probably the pens I'm using but um, when I use my daughter's feather quill type dip pen you could really get that green quality and it was so neat but I haven't kind of been able to get it exactly the same Let's see, let me put plastic under that so it doesn't stain my board here. So there, so that's what that would look like. So I think what I'll do is do maybe, uh, maybe one ink bottle per page. Some of these are smallish, so I could get in, you know, like these are a lot more narrow. But I'm not sure. But what I do want to do is just write the name of the ink and the size bottle I got probably, and I was thinking of maybe what it cost for that ink. But I don't want to get too detailed because in the whole scheme of things, it doesn't really matter what it costs. It's just how do I like the look of the ink on paper. 
or you know what's the difference between like I'll show you my two I was getting mixed up on the scotch brown and the sepia so this one's much lighter but they both have this like shading quality and on the paper I was using I kept thinking one was one and the other was a different was this one but I was using two different pens and they just showed up slightly different so the value to this swatching is I'll have a comparison and if I lose track of what I've put in which pen which is not a large selection but still obviously you can still get mixed up um, anyway it's so this is going to be a reference for me and just a fun thing to look through I plan on swatching the ink bottles that I own like the full-size bottles um, in a section that is like I have this in a an abundant quality and then maybe do a, another section where I'll just swatch um, the ink samples I've received. So if I'm ever in the market for say a green ink or another blue ink, I can look at my swatches and say, hmm, maybe that's the one I want. I think I want to record as well. To me, when I write with it, does it feel like a wet flowy ink? Does it feel more dry? So I'm definitely liking the wet inks. Um, and so now, there is more of the quality, whoopsie, of the shimmer. And along the edges where I did that little second coat, you can see kind of the greenish um, undertone emerge. I don't know if that's visible or not, but it's, it's a very beautiful ink. I was really attracted to that, especially since it's been around since 1670. I'm like that deserves trying, not that ink per se, but the company, but to me, a company that's that old deserves to be investigated because they're doing something right so I'm very impressed with that and then I will probably do this one later I'll do them all but I just need to figure out which book so there you go I just think that's a cute little stamping slash fountain pen ink edition uh, fountain pen ink and then mood tape I don't know what I do with that but anyway so that's all just a little short video to show you that cool stamp and if you have any questions please comment below and I'm happy to have you subscribe and join me on my random journey through junk journals and stationery and fountain pens and books and bible journaling so if any of that appeals to you join the conversation and thank you for watching we'll see you next time bye